Welcome to this week's edition of Seawolves Weekly. On this week's show, we chat with our Seawolves student athletes about their push for civic engagement this election season. And it's scrimmage season here at Stony Brook. We'll give you guys an inside look as both women's soccer and lacrosse hit the field, as well as highlight the tradition of the Red Navy Games. And we debut a new segment this week, highlighting Stony Brook's Long Island student athletes as we paint the island red. All that and more on this week's episode of Seawolves Weekly. Welcome back to another edition of Seawolves Weekly. I'm Sam Rothman. We usually talk about Stony Brook sports season starting, but this week we're going to kick off the show as another season wraps up election season. 2020 has been a year unlike any other, making this election one of the most important in history. And Stony Brook student athletes made their voices known more than ever. So we sat down with Sasha Bekarova, who spearheaded the campaign to vote. So being a political science major, the Center for Civic Justice gave me an opportunity to embrace political education and get my peers on campus involved. I joined the Center for Civic Justice my sophomore year. I wanted to get involved um, in community engagement, uh, political education, and voter registration. The main initiative for the athletics department was to increase voter registration rates for student athletes. Before the summer, we started off with 1% of the voter registration rate, and through countless challenges, uh, registration sessions, pledging to vote, um, a lot of other fun stuff, we were able to get that number to 99%. As one of the undergraduate coordinators at the center, I was tasked with brainstorming uh, different ways to engage student athletes. Uh, I was working with Justin from football and Emerson from soccer, and we were able to create a huge social media presence and to get the word out for our student athletes. One of the biggest challenges that we faced as a center was getting people to understand what we were doing. Uh, many people also failed to acknowledge that they weren't just voting in a presidential election, they were voting in local elections, state elections, they were voting for different propositions, for the Senate, um, and simply that they thought that their voice didn't matter. A lot of student athletes thought that voting was a chore, and through challenges on the tennis court and on the football field, we were able to engage student athletes on social media in a fun way while still getting information out to them. Through our initiative, we were able to get a high voter turnout considering the circumstances and the adversity that we faced. Uh, and it was a really great feeling to know that all of our initiatives and actions didn't go unnoticed. And it was really great to see so many athletes get involved, um, especially on election day. Student athletes play such a big role on this campus. And as leaders on our campus, we were able to get a lot more students and people from our community involved and to understand how important it is to be civically engaged. What were the properties of the universe a few microseconds after its beginning? We are designing the quantum internet from Stony Brook University to the United States and to the world. What you do in a creative writing class, you're really inventing a self. We're trying to understand the process by which the ocean regulates temperature around the globe. We have high school students come to us, they work in the lab, they apprentice with us. We're training the next generation of scientists.
Welcome back. Typically when the calendar turns to November, the college football season is reaching a fever pitch with playoffs right around the corner. But this year with the spring season approaching in 2021, the team is using this time to focus on getting better as Johnny Wincott reports from practice. I mean, it's such a great group of guys. You got a uh, different type of personalities in every one of us. But TJ is just the cheerleader over here. We got Catapano, he's the rock. Tycho's the gunslinger, then I let them talk about me, I don't know. Augie, he's a very energetic guy, a very outgoing guy, love him. Augie, Augie, that's like, I, I feed off him like, that's like, we like the duo out there. Like when I was at Phil Corner, he was at Rover, kind of had like the same relationship and now I'm right behind him at Free Safety, we kind of got that, that little evil connection going. Stony Brook's four captains come in all different shapes, sizes, and positions. But where they come from, that remains the same. Everybody loves New York. Who doesn't love New York? You know what I'm saying? So that's uh, everybody being from New York is definitely, we all definitely get that vibe and uh, you know that feel for each other being that we're all from the same place. The New York tough, it's, it's always been in, embedded in me as a kid and as a, like coming up and playing sports and, and I'm sure it was in, in the, the other three guys that, that were named captains, but there's something about Long Island, New York that, that uh, it just, it gets to me. The offensive side of the ball is captained by quarterback Ty Kel Fields and offensive lineman Anthony Catapano, natives of Yonkers and Franklin Square. T.J. Morrison and Augie Contressa command the defense, natives of Yonkers and Comac. And in a season where nothing's guaranteed, no one is taking their captaincy for granted. Well, four of us, really, we've been, we came in together, we've been talking about moments like this, and now to actually see it come into fruition, like, it really means a lot to all of us. The captains are chosen by the team, so the guys believe in me, and that, that obviously means a lot to me because they feel like they could trust me to lead the team. I could be that, that guy that they, that, that they look up to and they, they come to when, when something, when they need advice and they need... So I'm just, I'm just happy and thrilled to be leading this team with, with the rest of these guys. It means a lot to me because I love this team. I'm from Long Island, and uh, it's just such an honor. Each member of the quartet calls the Empire State home, but some styles of captaincy may vary. You know, I always felt myself as a leader. I lead by example, really. I uh, leave all the talking to that guy, TJ. Yeah, I use my voice. That's like my thing. Like, I'll talk. Like, nobody want to talk, I'm going to talk. Like, I'm going to set that tone. I'm going to make sure we're on the same page because at the end of the day, I'd rather be the one to go out on the limb for everybody if that's what it, if that's what it's going to take. See, so I've never been a I've never been a vocal guy, but I'm more of a lead by example guy. I feel like I lead by example. You know what I'm saying? Whatever the coaches want done, uh, you know I'm I'm doing it. I'm always leading, leading by example in the front, and I feel like they trust me. With ten practices down and five to go, it's evident the Sea Wolves have complete faith in their four captains. But in a year where many may need additional leadership or guidance. The captains know it'll take more than four to have a successful spring. I tell all the guys, junior, sophomore, freshman, whoever you are, be a leader. You know, spread that because that's, that's how we're going to get it done on game day. I keep reminding them it's going to be a long road. We got to do the right thing, uh, stick together, and we'll be successful at the end. Obviously, you know, we're all old enough to know right from wrong, but sometimes uh, guys need some, need some guidance and they need somebody to look up to. We all have one, one common goal, and, and it's all just, just to get this team ready and and I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to do it next to, next to another three guys than, than these three guys. From the Seawolf sidelines, I'm Johnny Wincott. As football practices have started to wind down, intra-squad scrimmages are heating up for two America East powers. In case you missed it, check out the highlights from this weekend's women's lacrosse and women's soccer contests. Hey guys, want to just to, uh, welcome everybody. It's been a long time coming. Uh, the opportunity to be out here with our team competing. 60 second shot clock tonight. Bouncing ball goes. Oh, Miller with the free position. She charges and puts it in. But hey, listen, we're competing right now. That's all you could ask for. There's another goal for Red. So they capitalize. Looking for insurance run or insurance goals. And they'll get one. Here comes Poulos. So nifty. Reds trailing by two. And Hart scores. Just in the second half alone. Here comes Poulos. She's got space. Turns around. And scores. Here comes Kennedy. Makes it look so easy. Great save by Cameron Household right there. Red ball. A cutting Kennedy puts it in. 
Asatella. Gets inside, puts it in! For the women's soccer program, winning has become a tradition. They've taken two of the last three America East trophies. But competitive spirits are bred year-round, due in large part to an intra-squad competition that pits teammates against each other. The Red Navy game started when we were all hired as a staff in the spring of 2019. And it really just came from something we wanted to do in the off-season to break the sometimes monotonous venture of training when you're not able to play a lot of games. The girls are always competitive no matter what in a normal training session, so really it was just to give them a reward and sort of a brain break from that normal training environment. I think it's really brought us closer, especially as a senior, like seeing it done every single year. And especially during these times, like I don't get to see the freshmen a lot and the people I don't live with a lot. So coming together as like teams and strategizing and like just getting to know them like that and like how their wavelength goes is fun for us and the competition kind of brings out different sides of people that you didn't know really existed. So our team has obviously had a really good last three years. We've had um, a lot of success and I think the Red Navy Games actually plays a big part in that because we really come together as teammates. We start to know how each other operates and how we all think on and off the field. And it's just a really important way for us to get together, get to know each other even better um, off of the field a lot of the time and it's it's yeah it's a great it's a great thing for us to do when we're not playing games every week. The team bought in right away as soon as we introduced the idea of the Red Navy games. They the returners were used to doing a similar competition in the off season and really we just wanted to put our own spin on it. And since then they've brought the incoming freshmen in and really have gotten them on board. But again they absolutely thrive under competition so you really don't have to put much emphasis on it when you introduce a kind of competition like that. As a senior, it's, it's really important to be able to pair up with the freshmen. We had two on our team. So um, yeah, it was, it was great to, to have some experiences with them, get to know them on and off the field, play my first game with some of them. So yeah, it was, it was lovely to, to get to work with them. So pride is always at stake during these games, bragging rights. We've introduced a ceremonies at the end of the games where the losing team has the option to jump into Roth Pond, which is a kind of a landmark on campus. And when we do have the closing ceremonies, we'll take a picture and frame it and hang it in our locker room. So we have a, basically a wall of fame where all of our teams and future members of the program will see how the competition has gone. And, you obviously you don't want to be in the pond in those pictures so there is incentive in that. My first thought was that we've done something similar so I was like okay this will be fun we've done it before. I also lost my freshman year so I was like okay let's try this again maybe I'll win this year. Lost again um, but I think we kind of knew what it came down to competition wise and we're all really really competitive so it was fun for us. Bottom line is just keeping it fun for the group, keeping it competitive, but making it a team bonding experience as well. It's the off season, again, it can be a real grind if you're just doing soccer training and it can be really intense with conditioning. So we wanted to reward the players in other ways, but also encourage competition, which is very easy with this group. It is not hard to do and they have really just taken it and run with it. When I graduate, I am definitely gonna miss playing in the Red Navy games. Since I have been on Navy for two years, I hope Navy continues to overcome the loss that we started with. And I hope we win for the time being and every year after this. 
I really hope that the Red Baby Games continues to grow and they continue to keep it a tradition at Stony Brook. It's been a really important part of my experience here and uh, I would love to see it continue for the coming years. I will always be a fan of both the Red and the Navy team. Um, I'll always have a special place in my heart for the people that have to go for a swim in the pond because I've done it twice. So yeah, I just, I really hope they continue the tradition and I know it's a really important part of the year. You can experience the entire world right here. Here at Stony Brook, the faculty treat students more like professionals. Stony Brook helped me go further faster because I was able to get my bachelor's and master's in five years and that helped me land my dream job. There is that something for you out there if you're willing to go and find it. Coming together and feeling that sense of school spirit, that is one of my favorite experiences. From the moment you step into Stony Brook's door, they are already encouraging you to do research and meet with professors. There's more we can accomplish together than we can apart. What were the properties of the universe a few microseconds after its beginning? We are designing the quantum internet from Stony Brook University to the United States and to the world. What you do in a creative writing class, you're really inventing a self. We're trying to understand the process by which the ocean regulates temperature around the globe. We have high school students come to us, they work in the lab, they apprentice with us. We're training the next generation of scientists. Welcome back. It's time now to take a look at the news and notes surrounding Stony Brook Athletics. We finally have a schedule for America East basketball. Both the men and women open up the season against in-state rival Binghamton December 19th and 20th. Coach McComb's squad will host the Bearcats right here at Island Federal Arena, while the men will hit the road for the first two contests. The full schedule can be found on StonyBrookAthletics.com. Staying on the basketball courts, two more waivers were passed by the NCAA, giving Jaden Sales and Leah Amari Wool immediate eligibility for the 2020-2021 season. Sales, a transfer from Akron, shot 57% from the field in his three seasons with the Zips, while Wool averaged 12.5 points and 6.2 rebounds a game last season for another Mac school, Western Michigan. And men's soccer alum Leo Fernandez led the Tampa Bay Rowdies to the United Soccer League Conference title in late October. The squad defeated Louisville City FC 2-1 to claim the division crown. The midfielder scored five goals this season and helped anchor a defense that allowed the league low 14 tallies and recorded eight shutouts in 19 contests. The championship match against the Phoenix Rising was unfortunately canceled due to increased cases of COVID-19 in the Tampa Bay locker room. Another note to pass along this week, former Stony Brook pitcher Nick Tropiano was claimed by the New York Mets. He joins fellow Seawolf Daniel Zamora in Flushing. As you can imagine, head coach Matt Sank was pretty happy. Anytime you can have uh, two, uh, two former players in the big leagues, that's incredibly exciting. Uh, but to have Nick and Danny, uh, you know, two Stony Brook former great pitchers, uh, you know, you know, pitching for the Mets is, is amazing. Uh, you know, of course, no pun intended. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, it, the fact that uh, you know that, that Danny and and uh, and Nick are again pitching in the big leagues, but uh, you know, not only that, but at the same organization, you know, I think it just speaks to uh, the player development we have here, and uh, you know, very proud of them and, and proud of uh, the program and and what we've been able to do in so many ways, uh, especially uh, guys making it to the big leagues. Uh, you know, the fact that these guys uh, you know, were, were here with us and, and gone on to do amazing things in their baseball and professional careers is, uh, is something that uh, I'm extremely proud of uh, and uh, just makes me so uh, proud of our entire program. We're excited to debut a new segment here on Seawolves Weekly. Each week, we're going to tour the different towns and cultures that make up Long Island. First up is Deanna Weisenberger as she kicks off Paint the Island Red.
Hi, my name is Deanna Weisenberger. I'm on the women's lacrosse team and I'm from Garden City, Long Island. So Garden City is known for their excellence in sports and academics. Um, I've grown up there my entire life. Um, it's a place where, like when I go back there, being only 40 minutes away from school, it's like, it actually, it feels like home. Um, growing up in Garden City, it was only 20 minutes away from the city. So I had that feeling of being able to go to the city and then being able to come home and live in kind of like a suburban area. Um, so it was like two very different experiences that I got to grow up and live there, which is really cool. I love being able to play so close to home. Uh, going to Stony Brook, it's only 45 minutes from where I actually live, but I still get that kind of going away to college experience. And being that I'm so close to home, my parents can come to every single game. And it's like, I have that away feeling, like I'm away at college, but I know like whenever I need to, like I have the chance to go home, which is nice. You can experience the entire world right here. Here at Stony Brook, the faculty treat students more like professionals. Stony Brook helped me go further faster because I was able to get my bachelor's and master's in five years, and that helped me land my dream job. There is that something for you out there if you're willing to go and find it. Coming together and feeling that sense of school spirit, that is one of my favorite experiences. From the moment you step into Stony Brook's door, they are already encouraging you to do research and meet with professors. There's more we can accomplish together than we can apart. Welcome back. We leave you with another fun look into our Stony Brook student athletes as we battle some emojis with the Stony Brook volleyball team. Spoon candy. Huh. It's a Disney song. Um, that is a spoon, right? Spoon. Oh, spoonful of sugar. Yes. <laughs> spoonful. Oh, spoonful of sugar. A spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down. The medicine go down. Time's up. <laughs> um, Mr. Sandman. And Wizard. Ready Rice? Is that a leprechaun? Lucky Charm. Sandwich. <laughs> Sandwich. Sandwich! That makes that makes so much sense. Oh, sandwich! Oh my god, it's a witch! Okay, yeah, sandwich. Back to the future? <laughs> Cowboy, an astronaut, a potato, a T-Rex, and an alien? Oh, is that, um, that's a uh, Toy Story! Um, Walker takes. Oh, Toy Story. Oh, Toy Story. <laughs> yes. Toy Story. I love Toy Story. Watched all of them. They're great movies. You've got a friend in me. You've got a friend in me. 
That's it for this week's episode of Sea Wolves Weekly. For more content, head to stonybrookathletics.com and check out all our social media platforms. Also, next Thursday, 1030, head to Altice Channel 20 for our next episode. For Sam Rothman, I'm Jonah Karp saying so long, and thanks for watching.